everybody. I really hope you enjoyed our reading of the book Doobie Doobie Moo by Doreen Cronin about our very talented animals that could play instruments and could sing and could dance and that was really cool. And as we learned, I can't do very well when it comes to music. But the library does have a lot of fun musical instruments for kids to play with. And I brought a few of them to show you kids what you can do when you come back and our library opens for everybody to come and participate in things. Um, and they're a lot of fun. You know, we've got like shakers and we've got um, little xylophones and we've got tambourines and all kinds of fun musical instruments that make noise and that we can play with in um, our Discover classes. But I thought not everybody has these really cool instruments at home. But that doesn't mean we still can't make some instruments and have some fun. So I'm going to show you how to make a few musical instruments today. And you can enjoy making music at home to your parents' delight. They'll have so much fun. And some of them are really, really easy and basic to do. Like, did you know you can make a drum from a shortening tub? All you got to do is clean it out, rinse all the shortening out, take the, uh, take the paper off of it, put the lid back on, and you've got a nice little drum. Plus, you can store all your other instruments inside of it. Like if you make a lot of these little egg shakers, you can put them all inside too, and it becomes a handy little container to store everything. So it's a two for one deal. So that's like the easiest instrument you can make. And it doesn't even have to be a shortening container. You can use an oatmeal container, um, a bread um, container, any kind of cylinder you have in your pantry that's empty, just clean it out and you've got an instant drum. I also thought of these little egg shakers you can make. When we made our bath bombs, we used these Easter eggs and these are really simple to do. You just need a couple Easter eggs, just like these. And all you're gonna do is pop them open like that. And you're going to take some beans. You can make any kind of beans you want. I have a whole bag of assorted beans and you don't need a lot. You only need a small handful, just like about that. And you just want to put them inside your, your eggs. And parents, I strongly recommend that you glue these eggs shut, especially if you have small children in your house, because we don't want this to become a choking hazard. So use a hot glue gun or even just um, all-purpose glue and glue around the edge. It doesn't, care. It doesn't matter if it's messy. Um, it'll be fine. And then you just want to seal it up and let it sit. And then you can clean the glue off the edges. Want to make sure it's nice and sealed. And just let that dry. And then when it's dry, like this one, then all you have to do is get some stickers. We've got a sticker book. And you can pick out a bunch of stickers to cover the front of your egg with. You could do a smiley face. You could do, um, you could do words, you could do a little heart here. Any kind of stickers you want to make a fun little shaker so that when you're ready to play music, you can shake it up with all of your eggs. And then you can store them in your drum. So those are two really, really simple crafts to make for really young kids. For your older kids, for your um, preschoolers and your early elementary kids, we can make a little bit more complicated crafts. We can make a tambourine that they've decorated with animals from the book. Or if they're really ambitious, they can make a banjo or a guitar. And I'll show you how to make these now. To start with, to make the, the tambourine, all you need are paper plates. And it doesn't matter if you've got the flat rimmed paper plates or if you have the really, really cheap paper plates. Either one will work. But you'll need two of them. And you just need to draw a picture of your choice on what would normally be the bottom side of the plate. So you're going to need some markers for this. Or you can use paint, crayons or even stickers if you desire. And if you want to do any kind of design, if you want to just do a music note, music notes are easy, they're just big black dots. And that you put a, um, we could do an upside down one here, and we could do a right side one up here, like that, and you could do um, other kind of musical notes and symbols if you'd like. Um, to decorate it with. 
If you wanted to draw a duck, duck isn't that terribly difficult. You just need to draw a circle for his head. And then you want to draw a couple lines down for his neck. And then a big oval for his body. And then you want to give him some wings. And some wings over here. And then you want to color that all in. And you can use, if you want to use crayons to kind of mix it up a little bit to give it a different um, texture, different style. You can certainly do that. Um, don't worry about it if you're not the greatest artist, neither am I. The idea is to have fun and be creative in your designs. And then we'll color in Duck's head. I think we'll make his head a little bit bigger. His head seems a little bit small here for his body. So we'll make his head a little bit bigger. And then we're going to take the black and we're going to give him an eyeball right here in the middle. And we're going to outline his beak. And since he's singing, we want to open up his beak. Make it look like he's singing nice and loud. And then we'll take orange to fill in his beak. And give him some feet. And the feet, you just want to draw a three-toed foot coming out of his bottom of his oval. Like so. And then again, you want to color those in. Again, you can use crayons, colored pencils, or paints. You don't have to use markers. Um, you can also, if you're feeling particularly creative, you could cut out construction paper and glue it on, but that is going to change the sound of your tambourine and it might fall off um, if the glue doesn't stick really good. So once you have your design drawn on there, you can draw on the back side of the other one. On mine, we drew a pig and a cow and a sheep, and you can draw those as well. Once you have it all established, you want to get your bag of beans back out again, and you want to put a handful in the center. Well, I got stars in my beans. We mix too many projects together, I think. Put a couple handfuls of beans in here. And there's another star in there. We'll take that out. And we'll throw a few more beans in here. There we go. Um, you don't want to put too many in because then it makes it too heavy for your for your tambourine. You want just enough to make it to make noise. And then taking your bottle of glue, you want to very carefully run a bead of glue all the way around the edges of your tambourine just like this you want to make sure you get all the little cracks and edges in really good because otherwise your little beans will fall out for those of you that like a hot glue gun you can use a hot glue gun it will make this craft be ready to go almost instantaneously but if you don't have a hot glue gun the um, all-purpose glue school glue works just as good and I have to use that on my original one you want to make sure too that before you put this top layer down that the design you have on the back side is lined up. So make sure before you start that you've got them all lined up. And then just very carefully press the two plates together. Your hands are going to get kind of gluey. So if you um, don't like to get your hands glue, you might want to wear gloves or something. But the glue washes off right away. And then once it's all stuck together, um, just let it sit and dry. It should take a couple hours to be completely dry. And then when it's all dry, you'll be able to play with your tambourine. And you can pat it. Or you can shake it. However you'd like to do. It's pretty, it's pretty um, foolproof. So you guys will have a good time with that one too. And we'll set our, our one that we made here off to dry over here. Now the, the most complicated craft to do is the guitar or the banjo and you're going to need a few supplies for this you're going to need a paper towel tube um, i actually went ahead and already painted it um, before we filmed the video um, so a regular paper towel tube will do and then you need to scrounge in your pantry for small boxes this one was a popcorn box before i painted it and i found a peanut butter cracker box to demonstrate this one with i kind of like this one because it already had the center hole cut out if you use a popcorn box or a granola bar box or even a cereal box, you'll have to cut out a hole about yay big in the, in the middle of your box so that you've got a, um, a center of your instrument. You're also gonna need some rubber bands. Um, I recommend that you get some medium sized rubber bands. Your small rubber bands are nice, but they do put a lot of stress and strain on your box and eventually your box will crush from the, from the tension. So you really want to get like medium sized rubber bands, try not to get the small ones. And then you're also going to need paint 
or markers or paper or whatever you'd like to do to cover up the outside of your box unless you want to advertise the product that you've made your box out of. Um, I also went and cut out some construction paper circles that I then cut in half so we can make the tuning pegs on our guitar. And um, I also recommend that you have a, a marker so you can cut your holes and either a sharp pair of scissors or if your parents are helping you with an X-Acto knife so you don't cut yourself. So the first thing you want to do is take your box and you want to make sure that your opening is glued shut. You don't want it to be able to pop back open. And I already did that before we filmed the video. So we glue the opening shut. Then you have to decide if you want to make a guitar or a banjo. Um, if you do it this way, it would be a banjo. If you do it the long way, it would be a guitar. Since we've already done kind of the banjo, we'll make this one into a guitar. And then you're going to want to take your paper towel tube and you want to put it on top and center in the middle of your box. And then you want to draw a circle around it so that you can cut a hole here in the top. Now it's okay if it doesn't quite fit, if it's a little too big, because we really want to make this thing stick inside of it. So it's got to be a snug, tight fit. And I'm going to use my um, razor blade here to get my hole started. And we're just going to cut into the construction, or in the cardboard, I mean. And then I'll get my scissors out so that I don't cut my fingers off. I'm kind of fond of my fingers. And I don't want to lose them. And here we go. And you need to be careful. This is definitely going to be something that you need um, a grown-up to help you with, kiddos. You don't want to be um, accidentally slicing yourself. And, and then you can take your scissors and cut your hole out. Oops. There we go. Alright. And you just want to cut around. I'm not cutting the whole circle because I don't want to lose the integrity of my box. And cardboard is tough to cut, so if you need to get a grown-up definitely to help you with the scissors, you can do that too. Must have a grown-up to use the razor blade. And you might need a grown up to help you with the scissors to paint on your box. Now at this point, I would say go paint your box. Go decorate your box however you want to do it. Because once you start adding all the stuff, you can't do that anymore. But since we've already decorated this box, we'll just keep going and pretend that we've gone ahead and decorated it. So the next step then is to take your, uh, your paper towel tube and you want to feed it into your box. And it's okay if you smash the edges a little bit get it in there because you do need to get a nice tight fit. So you can kind of fold it in and pop it in there. And get it in nice and tight. Then when it's inside your box, you're going to want to um, place some glue inside of here to secure it so that it's nice and tight and it doesn't twist out. You want to be able to get it in there nice and tight and glue it in there and then let it sit for about three or four hours just to make sure it's tight before you go on to the next step. But we don't have three or four hours so we're just going to keep going. Then you want to get your rubber bands and like I said you want to get some medium sized ones. Something like this size is perfect and you can put as many strings on here as you would like um, and you just want to, I'm actually going to take this out for right now, you want to Wrap your rubber bands all the way over the opening. And we'll find another big one here. You'll also find that thicker rubber bands make a different sound than your thinner rubber bands. So, see that interesting how the different size, different thickness of rubber bands make a different sound? And so when you get all your bands in here, as many as you want, maybe I'll put one more on. One more on here. And then you need to stretch them out. And I will say that painting your box also gives it a little bit more strength, integrity. Um, and you'll have to probably um, wrap your rubber bands around your paper towel tube so that they all fit. I'll put my tube back inside here now.
And then you want to take your frets, or I mean your tuning pegs, and I just took a black circle that I punched out and I cut it in half. And then you just want to fold the tip over and put a little bit of glue on that folded edge and glue it all on in there and then glue it to the top of your um, fingerboard so that it makes a tuning peg. If you would like to draw strings on your fingerboard, you can. It's entirely up to you. And I recommend that you do two on each side. Um, you can do more if you want, but that would make smaller circles. And then you have your own little guitar for your homemade instrument band. And you can adjust your strings so that they play the same. And this one sounds like this. How fun is that? So you've got a bunch of different ideas now that you can do for your projects. You can play with a drum and make some cool noises. You'll also find that different size canisters make different sounds when you pound on them. You've got your shakers. You've got your tambourines. And your guitars and banjos. So you've got all kinds of fun musical crafts that you can make at home to work on your musical career. I hope you guys have fun with this and let me know if you come up with any others. There's lots of other instruments we can make at home because you can make sounds with just about anything, including your voice. So make sure you sing. Your parents will love to hear you sing. All right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this craft and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.